Okay. All right, so this is a new lecture. It's called How to Heal Yourself Naturally. If you cannot use the word heal because it's not allowed, because we're not doctors, you can say something like how to promote wellness to all in a natural way and just play with the words in that way. Again, you can uh, use this lecture every time that someone requires your services, not just related with yoga asanas or maybe pranayama. They want to hear about, you know, what is the holistic approach to, to be healthy, right? So we're going to go over some bullet points. And as I tell you them, of course, in the future, when you speak from your own heart and your own words, you can, you know, develop the topic as you like. So the first, um, the first thing to be able to heal yourself naturally will be to have a number one impeccable diet. That's what we're going to call it. So what does it mean, an impeccable diet? Well, impeccable is already when you don't have any slips, right? A lot of people have, you know, they take care of their diet Monday to Friday. I'm healthy. I'm healthy Monday to Friday. <laughs> and when it comes Saturday and Sunday, they go wild, you know? And they have a lot of, I don't know, less than pizza and beer and this and that and all these different uh, types of food that are probably not in their advantage and so when we talk about impeccable diet that means that the person is going to take care of the diet daily and we cannot say um, you know don't eat meat in certain places like go to the chamber of commerce with the commissioners so the, the governors and you don't want to say go vegan there but we can say things like less animal product right and more fruits and vegetables so that's you know a little bit more easy for the years so we'll say well an impeccable diet will have a lot of fruits and vegetables you know, they're not very harmful, harmful for, for the health. Of course, that in Nigeria, we're going to talk about the doshas and according to your constitution, you have a recommendation and, um, and like that. And uh, definitely nothing that is processed, not, nothing that comes in a can or in a box. And I also, you know, when I, my second day in Miami, I was working in Pizza Rustica <laughs> and I love it. But after a year, I was like, I think I need to upgrade. And I went to work in a law firm and I was you know, working in an office. And I remember buying those, you know, pasta from a box and they have a microwave. And I was being like two dollars and it was like spaghetti. <laughs> and I was like, nothing bad with this, you know. But of course, that food has no prana. They are encapsulated for how long and absolutely no energy, no vitality, and so much, um, uh, how do you say, preservatives, 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 and sodium, and colorants, and all kinds of chemicals that you don't want to, to consume, uh, especially in a daily basis, you know. Um, fry. You know, Dharma Mita says if you eat fry, you're going to feel fry. You know, because fried food can be tasty for the palate. And then again, you need to be aware, okay, I am satisfying my sense of enjoying. I'm enjoying this fried tofu, right? Uh, you know, and again, it is tasty. But what is in the nourishment? In a fried food, like most of the times, is none, none zero, right? So we need to be aware of that because you know. What about air fry? Yeah. The air fry, I don't know. I heard that it has some system similar to the microwave in the mm -hmm. way that kind of like uh, kills the food. I don't know, but there's no oil, so I guess it will be a little healthier. Uh, we'll need to. You know, I don't have one, so I, I cannot <laughs> talk about it. 
But yeah, as long the heat doesn't kill the the prana of that food and it doesn't have that uh, harmful oils that we said the only oil that is okay to warm up is the coconut oil, uh, which is non-saturated fat or even ghee, uh, which in Ayurveda, they make, in Ayurveda they make us put ghee in the nose. I put ghee on my nose, mm. ghee in my ear, I'm full on violin, but it's something about that is related with the joints, is related with uh, having plasma in your body. Plasma is a source of ojas, which is the source of your youth. What is this? He's clarified butter. I, uh -huh. what, what do you know about microwave radiation killing the prana? Yeah, that's terrible. If you have a microwave, just unplug. <laughs> you, I use it like a closet. You just unplug from the thing. Because it is like atomic bomb in small scale. It's radiation. So never use microwave. That's the worst. The worst. So you're putting butter in your ears? <laughs> it's so serious. Ghee. Yeah. Ghee. A little bit. Is Why your, is your vata? No, because ghee has a special condition that is similar to plasma. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we put sometimes ghee on the eyes with trifala, with some med we call medicate ghee. So we put herbs, we cook the, these herbs, you know, like for example, you're going to learn about trifala. Like if you have anything with your eyes, you can be completely healthy again, just using this trifala and ghee. Now, of course, if you're a vegan, I don't know, have a little thing with that. Has some um, vegan kind of ghee, but um, it's basically fat. So, uh, in Ayurveda, they consider ghee sattvic, like products made of like, milk. But again, <laughs> in India, the cow is sacred. I mean, you have cars and you have cows, mm -hmm. and the cows have makeup. <laughs> because they have makeup and rings and beautiful and they're adorated and they are worship. Like no one can touch the cow, okay? That is is a different culture. So of course if the cow is worship like the sacred mother, her milk, her her yogurt, her products will be thank you so much. And you know, here that's why here we gotta be vegan because here it's not like that. Unless you go to Gainesville has a Hare Krishna farms, and they also kiss the cow, and then they massage the cow, you know, with so much love, and then the cow feeds her babies, and then after she feeds her babies, then a little bit to us. So first will be the cat, and then us. But, you know, like, non-violence um, is involved, right? So that is the main thing here. But the gift <coughs> is an incredible medicine. So you will learn in your Jumeida. We have someone that I invite. I uh, usually I give the talk so I can revise the talk afterwards with you guys. So now we'll bring some of the herbs that I use. But he will he will come and do the talk so I can go at school that day, this Sunday. Um, his name is Jesus, and I recommend you to do a full consultation. You know consultation where you can see what is your disbalance on your doshas and so on but let's go back about yeah the lubrication is very um have a lot of emphasis on that in our juveda and you know, this is one of the ways that we you will age well without arthritis without amnesia without alzheimer right because you you, you are lubricated you know um the nervous system is like cables, let's say, and has to age that cover that this it covers the cable. This no, plastic will will vanish, will start deteriorating. So then, when they inside the cable, when these uh, metals are exposed, then when you start having uh, neurological problems, has you age things like that, right? You can focus. 
can focus. You have a earring. Me. You think the animals are talking to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you have a lot of air. You know, so that's why you hear me. So you gotta be aware of these elements, and you know that's how hard to get up. But okay, let's go back to the lecture because our dream it is on Sunday. Um, so impeccable diet. You don't want to go like fanatic vegan full force. You just want to explain that you know you want to say things like, well, meat is too heavy for our digestive system. In fact, biologically speaking, we are not carnivores. You know, the lion has one, uh, one tube and two stomachs. They're meant to digest food. And they have the teeth. They're made to break flesh. We don't have those tools. God didn't design us with a digestive system for the meat, neither the teeth. So, when you put the wrong fuel in your car, let's say I have a Porsche, right? And I put <laughs> coconut oil in the Porsche. Of course, it's not going to run so good. So the same concept. So we will mention things like less animal products, more fruits, fruits and vegetables. And that's for someone that has an intermediate health, right? And they just want to get a little healthier. Now, you know, I have seen people that have stage four cancer having um, a very much incredible change on their health together with meditation and Tai Chi and Qigong and yoga and all that. And, you know, change of the mindset, you know, because again, what you think is going to kind of happen. So you're going to watch your thoughts, but also having like juice fast, or maybe not just fast a mono diet, what we call a mono diet. Uh, you can have kichari, which is also an Arnavita dish, which is just like um, rice and, and this mango with these lentils that become like full protein. But something about juicing that is really wonderful, of course, you know, um, not to overdo it. Uh, I did it, the last time I did it, I'm overdue already. But I did it for 15 days, of course, on the summertime, it was super hot, it was like easier to do. And I will have like, let's say I will have an herbal tea in the morning, have my breakfast. And then, you know, by I know, like 10, I will be hungry. I will have a first juice, maybe, I don't know, very liquid orange and carrots and ginger and then after two hours I'll be hungry again. <laughs> then I will have a thicker one, maybe like with banana or avocados or you know something with papayas, you know, like heavier, okay, or good for another two three hours, <laughs> and then I will be hungry again. Then maybe I, I will do more like a vegetable one, like a virgin blood mary, like maybe with celery and parsley or cilantro or cucumber and lime, like even salty perhaps. And then I will have a tea again. And then maybe, you know, that was kind of the end. And then after 10 days, I start mixing chewing. Like I, I just wanted to chew something because everything was liquid. And I cheat, the way that I cheat was chewing uh, sugar cane and chewing celery. So I would chew, chew, chew and spit it out. So I was able to do 15 days in that way. And I also started having soups at night. Like very light, just like a smoothie, like pumpkin. You know, like a pumpkin, so just water and pumpkin or sweet potato, very light. Cause I'm like, man, I don't know how, how long I've been staying with it. But I wanted to keep going, you know? but. The fact that it was all liquids, so let's say that I'm, you know, trying to, you know, I have a, you know, some disease that I want to give. When you don't eat, you actually have more energy than when you do eat. It sounds funny, but that breakdown of the food takes so much energy of your body that you get tired. But if I have, you know, a super smoothie, of course, I don't have cold drinks because in our Jumeirah we're again... So sorry. So sorry. No one. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's this part of the... Sorry. I'm
maybe I just put it in the box. <laughs> I will bring another holder. No, I can move it. Alright. Yeah, so in Ayurveda, they don't want to agree with juice for so long, you know, because of those vatas and it's all raw. That's why maybe with the soups, you know, again, it's not to be done every month. I did it like, <laughs> like two years ago. Um, but for someone that has some disease that they maybe never have done a detox, when you juice, or you liquefy your food, or you have that mono diet, like just very simple rice and lentils, and, and that will allow the body to um, maybe clean, clean the system. And a lot of people that have that type of diseases, like, okay, they're going to die with cancer, they don't die, you know? But they need to have the condition of like, okay, I'm, I can be without meat, I can be without alcohol, I can be without having my pizza, my donuts, my coffee, you know, and just giving myself a break. So, you know, if you have situations like that, they, they need to really be um, very um, engaged with the program. And another one that is a little bit more, which I don't recommend to people that are depleted, you know, in this case, will be the master cleanse. Now, if you're a yogi, you definitely want to do it because when you control your senses, when you control the tongue, the tongue is like a little devil, you know? Mm -hmm. Give me that secret, I'm gonna kiss this guy, let's stop gossip, it's like another person. <laughs> but but you, if you control that layer, you will feel really in power. So the master cleanse, again, is just limonade. It's just water and uh, maple syrup, lime, and cayenne pepper. <laughs> That's it. That one I did it for 10 days, uh, but I felt, um, I never, well, of course, I'm not going to go to cross feet or climb a mountain, you know. During that time, I would do more hatha, more yin, but I was always full of vitality. I never crushed my energy. And again, it's Maybe after Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and you eat so much with so many people and then you just want to clean your intestines. Mm -hmm. On the master cleanse, I did it once for 10 days, that was good, but my brother-in-law did it and he, he had been a che chewing tobacco his whole life and so he was maybe 30 or something when he did it. And and so he started, and then he was so surprised because after like 10 days, he could still taste the tobacco, oh. even though it wasn't chewing anymore since he started the cleanse. And so he said, okay, well, I'm gonna do it another five days because I'm sure then this will be gone. Did another five days, he could still taste it in his mouth yeah. every day. He's like, okay, I'm gonna do this until I don't taste the tobacco. Oh, that's not 50 days. Oh, wow. He did that master cleanse. I mean, you drink like one or two gallons yeah. a day, like you said, on this lemonade. And it worked? And like... It worked, and he's never gone back to chewing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, but God. that's how long it took to get that. So it, it, that stuff just was lodged in every cell of the body. Like... Now, yeah, so you, we got to be careful because in that, that's what we call overdoing. Well, yeah, but he had this. He had, he had this, you know, this yeah. and, and he had some weight, not a lot, but he had weight to lose. So he did get a little bit too skinny, but not like, he was not too bad. And he started eating. Well, because of the lime, you can develop ulcers mm -hmm. because it's acid. So, for example, first of all, if you do the juice, the fruit juice or the master cleanse, you gotta walk like you have a, a, a baby and you have your mamareras, you have your uh, bottles with you, whatever you go, you know, you get hungry, you just chew that thing, you know, <laughs> right? And so if I was, if I, you know, if I wanted to detox, I would put more cayenne pepper. If I want to eliminate the hunger, I would put a lot of lime, I would become acid, would take my hunger away. 
if I was moody, which I have was very often, uh, you know, you know, I was sentimental, I would put a lot of that maple syrup and make it sweet. So you can play, you know, by making more spicy, more sweet, and more. But I think. Um, after three days, you really start, um, after three days, you kind of stop um, eliminating solids. So you can say, okay, now it's like empty. So if you do it for five days, six days, I think it's good. Uh, the idea is to clean your intestines. When you're not, you know, nothing's coming out anymore. You're not doing anymore. That's it, you, you know. They did the job they needed to do, because that's the idea, to clean and give a rest to your digestive system. Now, my teacher did it for 30 days, and she she got a, and she was like, I'm so skinny, you know. I mean, handstands with the master kit, I was like full on, you know, no, nothing was heavy me down. So again, you know, sometimes it's recommended to, to do some sort of fasting, even if you have fruits for like three days, Maybe something really nice and easy like a watermelon, you know, like in the summer, you're going to give yourself a break to clean your insides. We're talking about a vegetable diet and how to push the disease away. It's really, you know, it's, you know, very interesting about that. Now, we have people that do the water fast, for example, that has nothing in there. You know, at least in this one you have lime, we have some, something like a maple syrup that has a little bit of uh, minerals, you can also put, you know, like a, the cayenne pepper sometimes and a little bit more lime salt if you like. Uh, you can have any herbal teas you like without caffeine, of course. So, uh, but impeccable diet would be a lot of organic foods, non processed foods, you know, healthy food, not food from restaurants because we already talked about that that food is bad quality because they are making money. On your, on your plate, so I learn how to do very simple and um, and like that, and, and and always, no, it's a constant um, vigilance. You're not just healthy from nine to five, and then you go have you know fried tequinos with margaritas, and I was healthy the whole day, you know, or Monday to Friday. These are thing that you just keep in your life um, is, and if you're healthy already that's you know you're just going to have a life where you I mean guys some people get really sick really sick and the hospital bills are non joke imagine you have a beautiful job and you work so hard and you work five years on this job or even more, eight years, and you want to buy your land in Costa Rica and buy, build a meditation center and live the life, and then you don't start a, 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 a understanding about your relationship of food and health, and then you get sick. You know, every day you go in the hospital, it's like 3,000, 5,000, you can spend 30,000 like this in a medical bill here. And then you work so much for so long for nothing. And so many people are like this. You know, they get sick very easily. So that's the first point. Second point is what we're going to call daily exercise. So impeccable diet, you can explain as you have your vagina kosher, your wisdom, right? What does it mean to have a good diet, impeccable diet? And daily exercise is Another component, now you're just going to have cherries and grapes all day and salary and, and then the couch watching Netflix for five hours, that's not going to be the formula for your beautiful house. You must move your body. You must move your body. Of course, we're cheerleaders of yoga, but in the end of the day, anything. <coughs> Especially moving the legs. Okay, quads and hamstrings. You have a question on the test that is related with this. I think, I don't know if Christina talked about it, but um, in the test, it will be a question that is like this, right? The question, the question is, what is the most important group muscle 
to expedite our healing. Some people sometimes answer the heart more well, yeah, young. If you don't pump the blood, you will die. Or the lungs, well, that's not a, a muscle, it's an organ. <laughs> we don't breathe, we we'll also die. But what's the most important group muscle well, to, to expedite your healing? So, and this has to do with this concept of daily exercise, of the sadhana. So, so the qualities and the hands. When you have a circulatory system that comes from your heart, right? And spread out through veins all around the body. So the blood is spread out in the veins, right? And then the only way to pump the blood back into the heart is when you, when the muscles, especially of this big thigh, they're going to squeeze you know, the limbs and veins, they're going to squeeze them and they're going to squeeze and the blood is going to pop back into the heart. That's when you get circulatory system activating, you flash whatever impurities don't belong there. So moving is essential to have good health. If the person doesn't like yoga, all right, you, you are a holistic coach. You just go with them two blocks around the block, two, two, two rounds around the block, walking on the beach, riding bicycles, even salsa dance will count as long as you're moving, moving your legs, ashtanga vinyasa, anything that will move the legs. So the answer on your task will be, well, quality sickness and hamstrings because as we have daily exercise, will promote better circulatory system, right? Circulatory system. And that will help to purify and alkaline the blood. If the blood is stagnated, if you have that friend or family member that stays the five hours in front of the TV, you can already tell by the legs, by the tamasic energy that they're not that healthy, <laughs> right? So it's something about moving that is very important. So again, the blood will go to the extremities, through the body, arms, legs, through the veins, and then when we move the body and the muscles contract, they squeeze the vein, and it goes back into the heart. When the blood goes back into the heart, not only you push stagnation away, you allow the, the blood to be a better quality blood, a more alkaline blood. And another thing is that you can write there, um, only in um, acidity environment is where disease will be formed. So if you have an alkaline environment, that's not going to be promoting cancer or diabetes or all these very popular diseases right now, liver disease, right? If you have blood circulation, again, an alkaline blood, good quality blood, then you will have less disease. Another way to purify your blood is having dark green, like chlorophylla, chlorophylla. Chlorophyll. 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 Yeah. And some places they sell the wheatgrass shot as pure strong. Okay. One time, one time I did too many of those and instantly they all came back up. Okay. I thought I was doing a good thing. <laughs> I don't know, I might I have did like, like four. four or five. Oh, yeah. It was it was not smart, but I thought I was doing a good thing. No, I cannot I cannot do it. <laughs> and it's <laughs> still at uh, Whole Foods like for liquid for Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well one of the things that it's great, it's like a temperature. One of the things that you must have for your life and for your future clients, patients, is moringa. Moringa has more vitamin A than spinach, has more vitamin C than blueberries, is a super, super, super food, has more calcium than milk, 
It has everything. And it grows like a weed and it grows yeah. in any. You can have like a tea, water. you can have this green power moringa, put a scoop on your smoothies. Go in, start slow. It tastes good. Yeah, it tastes like a grass. <laughs> not, a fun, um, not a fun one. But it's fun. We also talk about, you know, if you have a hard digestive system, maybe steam the kale, the spinach. I think some of my students, they'll uh, make kale chips. Like on um, the oven, just like yeah. a touch, that is not so hard. Anything that is green, guys, like that's going to purify the person's blood, you know? And your job as a holistic doctor, coach, will be to help people to improve their health. So that is the second one. So impeccable diet, daily exercise, either as a yoga, riding the bicycle, cleaning the house with salsa or something that got them moving. But you see that magic word daily, like the sadhana, every day, every day. You know, you, they need to commit. How, 15 minutes, that's all you have, fine. Every day, it's the consistent of it that will really make the difference, okay? Then the third one, we're going to put R and R. My favorite, <laughs> I wish. Rest and relaxation. R and R. Rest and relaxation. So I think you will study also a little bit this weekend about the importance of the parasympathetic nervous system. Only when you are in a relaxation state of mind is that you can rebuild and you can recharge. Not on the fight and flight mode, which we are when we practicing strong, which is vinyasa, you know, today I went to, to do this procedure, then I came back here, then the traffic and all that, so now, you know, I go home and just, mm, right, just stay still and chill. So something about the ability to know and to give yourself permission to rest. Also, being too productive apparently is a trauma response. We talk about that. You know, you're so, if you're so busy, you don't need to deal with what really matters, which pops in that silence moment. So now I'm so busy with this event, I'm busy with this career, when I do my own self analysis. <laughs> Never, because I'm so busy, right? I don't kind of as a, as a runaway. But, Rest and relaxation should be taken very seriously. So what does that mean practically? In Ayurveda, they are not uh, fans of naps. But let's say all the Italians and the Mexican and the Argentines are. <laughs> so you know, a little bit different in that culture. Now, you know, they close the business yeah. because la siesta. It's so serious. You know, nap is a nap. Now, we are not going to say that to completely nap, like sleep. But again, it can be a moment, like after you eat, you're supposed to walk to help your digestion. After that, maybe what I do sometimes, I just rest for 10 minutes and I think I fall asleep for like four minutes, like a deep Yoganita Shavasana. And then I come back, I'm much more plugged in, right? Oh, okay. Um, so, um, yeah, if you're a kapha, if you're like a little bigger consistent, that water and earth constitution, definitely naps will just make you kind of go fat in a way. But you can have a moment of relaxation. It can simply be a moment of shavasana, right? You just lay down and you just don't do nothing for a moment, you know, like recharge yourself. Actually, it has some companies in Germany and you know Europe a little more advanced in a way. They have this kind of capsules. It's like a bean in Japan also. So you run the capsule, but it's going to like a little bean. Bean up in the capsule. You enter the capsule, has air condition, you can put sound waves, and you close the capsule and you sleep, and then you go back to work after you feel productive again. And feel like the employees are much more happy and they actually work much better. They're coming here to some gym chain or put it on the gym. Oh, yeah? Wow. 
work out and take a nap and then continue. Huh? <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, so something about being rested is important to improve your health because if you're all the time exhausted, if you're all the time depleted, if you are running on your battery energy, then you're putting yourself in a situation of risk where your body will say, hey, you don't give me rest, so now you're going to have fever and flu for 10 days because you don't listen to my symptoms, right? So tell, talk about that with, with yourself and, and your future students. And that also means making some changes on your habits, you know? Like I know that it's, anything that is new is hard, but if you commit yourself, okay, you have early dinner, and then by 8, just pick up a book, put the electronics away, hot shower, relax the muscles in your river that you will bathe yourself with oil, like an oily hug that helps to reduce the anxiety of the day and makes you more calm. Maybe put some, you know, very nice binary sounds and do some cooling pranayams. Make like a ritual. Put yourself to bed. Like if you have a child and the child is, I don't know, four and, you know, you guys say, oh, time to go to sleep. So you also start creating those habits. Something about going to sleep early and waking up early that is in your advantage and it's like more in harmony with, with everything. When you go to sleep late, um, you know, you just put yourself in a situation where you're going to be lethargic and depleted in the morning. Um, so, so talking about that, you know, little, you know, switches on the habits. You know, we have people that come to Ayurveda consultations and they literally, they tell us, you know, I have dinner at 10, I would sleep at 1. And they are already with like, you know, they have insomnia, they have anxiety, they have migraines, they cannot study, this and that. We call those symptoms. After the symptoms comes disease. So it's better to treat the, you know, the symptoms as a preventive health care than let the things turn to something bigger, right? So accommodating the times of sleep and sticking with it is also important because if you one day you go to sleep, a nine, another day a one, another day a ten, then the body will never get used it. Remember, the body, the mind is like a little pet that you gotta train. And like we said, you know, if you're very depleted, let's say sometimes I uh, honestly I'm tired, you know, I'm talking like five hours here, boom boom, then go home and I'm tired, you know, I'm tired. And so yeah, taking a, a short nap, it may be better than have coffee and push it through. You see what I'm saying? So just rest. If you're very tired, rest. And then another thing that we can write in there is just having time off. Rest and relaxation. Are you working every day? When do you recharge? That's typical American. Everybody works every day. You know? And if they're not working in the office, maybe they Sunday they work at home. I have my day off. But I'm doing the laundry, I'm cooking for the week, blah, blah, blah. and so they're also tired. So a, a day where uh, osseo, no, it's just the art of non-doing. The art of non-doing, that means not working on the computer, but neither, you know, cleaning the entire closet or <laughs> just allow yourself just to be doing nothing. I learned that as an age <laughs> because you know I love to do things all the time as well and now I just like no and I sometimes some of the teachers I think the other day it was July 4th and I wanted to talk about the you know, retreat that we're going to do in the morning and then I'm like you know I'm off today so if it's for work not even bother <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're right, tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on, you know, it's a holiday. You know? <laughs> so, I just, so allow yourself, um, the Jewish, you know, they know about this. They have the Shabbat Shalom, and they turn those electronics off. They don't even drive. And that's the day that are spending more quality time with their family. 
meals together, they do prayers, like we do mantras, they also do their mantras, their Jewish Hebrew mantras with the whole family together. And they're very orthodox, they don't even use the cell phone until the next day and they stay home, you know. So maybe find your Shabbat Shalom, you know, it's a, maybe it's a Sunday for you, maybe it's a Friday, I don't know. But a time where you're like, I'm not going to engage in activities. I'm going to allow myself just to nourish myself, maybe be lazy as well, but you know, not lazy in the lethargy, but you know, put a hand and bring a book in the park, you know, and I don't know, go to the beach and then just, maybe that's a day to do take a nap, <laughs> right? Um, like watch a like, commentary on TV, enjoy the tamasic stillness. Uh, but that's another thing that for you guys maybe sound okay, but a lot of people, they don't understand this, especially in America. You know? In America, it's like go, 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 work, work, work. And when you have someone that has some disbalance on their health, they might need to be taught about you must stop working. You must give yourself... And this is like just having a day off. Uh, we're also talking about just vacation, you know, just having a time where you're just going to completely uh, disconnect and reconnect with yourself. And uh, according to Master Lapa, he said that all yogis must go to nature once a month. So I already feel welcome to join us. But I'm thinking to go camping after the training, you know, like just to have this four or five days in the springs, make the fire, go to the stars, and then you can go back to your hardcore, back to charge, right? Otherwise, how are you going to serve others? So, fine. If you don't have time to go and camp or the money and the travel and all that, you know, you can always find a park near your neighborhood. And you know, we have Oleta Park. Have you been there before? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so nice. In Oleta, you can ride kayaks, mm -hmm. you can ride bicycles, has a beach. Mm -hmm. You can even ride cabins. 20 minutes in Aventura. So it's like you're in the forest, <laughs> but you're not really. That's where you're going camping? No, if I go camping, I go up in. Gainesville? Yeah, in the springs. Yeah. But let's yeah, say you don't have the money, you don't have the car, you don't have the time, you can go one night to a little bit and sit there. And you just pretend that you're in the Masonic forest or something, you know what I mean? But just being in nature, you know, having that time off is very, very good. Um, the next one would be um, believe on your inner wisdom or believe on your healing power. So this is basically uh, removing the ego and allowing the body to heal itself. Believing that you actually do have the power to heal yourself. I don't know, you probably do know this guy called Joey Dispenza. Mm -hmm. He creates a uh, very popular now uh, meditation school. And based on this, again, just like um, Louis Hay, you know, the power of the mind. So w if you have something injured, for example, if you have your wrist or your shoulder, we talk about leave it alone. Because if you leave it alone, the body has this inner wisdom called immune system <laughs> that it will rebuild and it will heal naturally. Always when you don't interfere on the process, right? You want to stay, let's say, a whole month without messing with the wrist, and then slowly you will see improvements, and then in within that month, you got, you know, triggered by your ego because everyone is doing handstands in class, and you're the only one not doing the handstands, and everyone is doing it, so your ego is like, do it, you're good, you can do it. And then you mess, you mess up the healing up until that point, right? So it's a little bit the same concept. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone, whatever it is. Of course, with the other um, topics that we mentioned before. But the body can actually reveal re and, and you know, 
uh, overcome any disease if you believe that you have that power. So I think the story of this guy, he got a bad, bad car accident. And in this car accident, he broke many vertebrae of his spine. So many, he was in a wheelchair. And the doctors basically told him, I'm so sorry, but you're going to be always forever in a wheelchair or most of your life. And there's nothing we can do because you broke this vertebrae, this vertebrae, this vertebrae, they're all broken. You know, so it's nothing we can do. So then he started meditating. And on that, you know, internal, external, complete, he visualized exactly the vertebrae. Uh, into detail, like he actually studied and he saw his virtues and he was able to visualize in his mind and he, in his meditation, he started reconstructing his own virtues, like seeing happening, right? Seeing yourself heal, see yourself without pain, see yourself free of cancer, see yourself happy and enjoy, see your liver without um, cirrhosis, whatever it is, visualize the cells building, getting together, and that's what he did. And then he fixed his back with his mind, you know, and then the doctor was like, how, what have you done, what happened, and he just said, I believe on the power of healing myself, you know, and I have another little story short, I have a friend of mine, very bohemian, he is was one of the musicians of Manu Chao. I don't know if you've heard, Manu Chao mm -hmm. is a band who goes around. And he's very bohemian. And he had hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is now, you can just monitor, because it's like a virus on your blood. And he became actually very good friends with my mother. Believe it or not, my parents are very more friends with her. And so, you know, he will, he, he knew that he had this. And we saw him every day doing his sadhana at the beach. He would mix some qigong with some yoga, and then he would sing, and then he was, he was snorkeling, whatever. That was his sadhana, that was his moment. And then he would sit, and he, was, and he would repeat, I am healed, I am healed, I am healed, I am healed. Okay, he did this without the, like, I want to get the result. You know, like, I, I the ego, no? So he just did this with open heart, happy. So every three months, he needed to go and check how much hepatitis he had in the blood to monitor. And after three years, he went, let's say he got blood tests, you know, like three, two months later, two months uh, before, like, I don't know, medium viruses of, of the hepatitis. And then after he went to take blood, blah, 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 no more appetite, zero. And then the doctor was like, what have you done? How come you cure appetitis? Like, how come? And then he told the doctor, I told myself I was here. Ha, 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 ha. All crazy because he's a musician in Bohemia. No, all crazy. Good spirits, you know. And then he went home and showed my mom the blood test. I hear myself, look. Zero negative appetites, you know, before and after. So has something about the power of the mind, and you you believe in um, that that you have that divine intelligence that you can do anything, and you can heal anything, and you can overcome anything, and it's all right here, right? So Joe Dispenza did it. My friend from Manu Chow did it. And you can do it too, and you can tell your future patients that it's possible. You know, in the same way, I have the mother of my uncle, for her whole life, she was afraid of cancer. The cancer, the cancer, he has cancer, she got cancer, cancer, be careful with cancer, 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 cancer. When she got, she got cancer, she died of cancer, she was healthy. But she, so many times, the cancer, 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 she just brought cancer to her. So it goes both ways. That's why yoga is for the mind. Yoga is for the mind. And whatever is that you are repeating is what you're going to, is going to show up in your life, you know? So you got to be monitoring these guys very careful. But when we're talking about how can you be healthy, natural, 
That's a big component. Believing that you have the right to be held. Believing that you can. The guy was in a wheelchair. They told him forever you will be in a wheelchair. You know? So this is like super inspiring. So in the same way, you can help someone to channel health through cancer, through diabetes, to hepatitis, to cirrhosis. And if you help someone to heal that is dying of cancer, not only you are channeling Jesus and Buddha to do you, you are saving a whole family. Imagine, you know, someone very near your family died. You know? My mom died. What happened to my sister and myself and my brother? The whole family crumbles. Someone maybe pass away. And that can be redirected <coughs> with good diet, with the, you know, daily sadhana, you know, good thinking. <laughs> good thinking. So, okay, the last one, I think this is fifth, right? One, two. Yeah. That will be creating a positive environment. So this is also key for expediting your healing. Let's say, for example, you have depression or you have a flu, right? Let me say something. Some disbalance, right? And then you go home and you have a roommate that has a thousand dirty dishes on the sink. You go home and it's loud music, maybe smelling like alcohol and cigarettes or things like that. So that's not going to be a positive environment for healing, you know? You want to create what we call Vastu, which is like a sacred um, charge, high vibrational space to heal, you know? And how is that going to look like? Neat, clean, you know, maybe a water fountain, maybe, you know, mantras playing, you know, clean home, a peaceful home. And uh, even I told the students, you know, like they had, like they, they did, they had, like, let's say, depression or they have anxiety and they go home and let's say you are, you know, in a Cuban family, right? And all you want, you have, you have this, you have depression, you have anxiety, or you have both, I don't know, you have something. And you go home and the TV is loud. Everyone is yelling. You have no peace. The guy is smoking, you know, big cigars in the living room. So, you know, that's not uh, uh, an environment for healing. So you also need to create a peaceful space for you to, to get well, you know, to recharge. That's why sometimes they leave the person on the hospital a couple of days more just to be in bed and to be chill. You know, because if they go home and then maybe it's chaotic. So, creating a positive environment for the healing. Peaceful, sattvic, charged, plants, crystals, clean, you know, the energy of purity. You know, when you, if you go to my house, I have crystals everywhere. I have plants everywhere. I look here, I have a gnome, I have a gnome, I have a gnome, I have alms everywhere. Like whenever I look, it's on there. <laughs> you know, so if you create a place of, you know, that is, is, is charged for, for this type of practices. So, okay, impeccable diet, daily exercise, rest and relaxation, believe on your inner power, and create a positive environment is our formula to have always wellness and be healthy naturally without falling on you know the sadness of disease and not being able to either practice meditation or be with your family or enjoy your life. You know, we are here to be free of disease, free of pain. And it has a way, and that's the way. Wow. All right, let's close with a um, with a um, shanti mantra.